Hello and welcome to the 8th video in a series on how to make a Space Invader style game in Scratch 3.0. Now by now your game should be almost finished. In this video you'll be learning how to add a title screen and some game music to really finish it off. So let's get started straight away by creating a new sprite that's going to be our title logo. Now you can feel free to name your game whatever you like and to design the graphics of your logo to suit you, but I'm going to keep things simple by doing a text-based logo for my game. And it's important that you get your uh, title graphic as close to the center of the sprite costume editor as you can. Once you've made your logo, we need to add some code to define how it's going to appear. So go to the code editor for your new logo sprite and drag in a when I receive block and set it to a new message. And this is going to be show title screen. Now under this block, you're going to need to add a show because it's probably been hidden. So we're going to do show and then whatever blocks you like, to determine how your logo will appear. Now you can do whatever you want, you can make it zoom in, come in from the side, bounce around, spin, whatever, go crazy, but I'm going to show you how to make a logo fall from the top of the screen and end with a little bounce. So to do that I'm going to start by dragging a go to block, uh, so go to x, y, and I'm going to make sure that I've set the uh, x to 0 so it's in the center, but y I'm going to set to 200 so it's off the top of the screen, so if I just click that you should see it kind of goes right up the top. And um, then I'm going to add some glide blocks and these sort of animate the movement. So I'm going to make it glide down uh, towards the middle of the screen. So it's going to be like gliding down towards the middle of the screen. And then it's going to bounce quickly up and fall back down again. So uh, to do that, I need a glide. And I'm going to glide for half a second, so 0.5 seconds. Two and I need to choose my position it's going to go to. So let me get, if you position your logo where you want it, it'll tell you what the Y value is. So this is uh, 28, so let's make that a nice even 30. So let's say X, 0, Y, 30. So if I click on that, I see it falls down. And to add the little bounce, I'm just going to do another glide for literally 0 0.1 seconds, so barely anything. And I'm going to go from 30 to, say, 40. And then I'm going to glide back down again. Take a little bit longer because of, uh, you know, deceleration, whatever. Uh, we're going to then glide back to that Y30 again. So it falls from the top. It starts at the top, falls to Y is 30, bounces up to Y is 40, and falls back down again to Y is 30. So let's just click and see how that works. There you go. And you get a nice little bounce. So once that's done, uh, we then want to show, I'd quite like to show a message here that says press space to continue. So I'm going to broadcast a new message. So broadcast, I'm going to need to create a new message. And it's going to say uh, show space to continue message. And finally, to make the logo disappear when the game begins, I'm going to put uh, in a when I receive hide game elements and I'm going to put a, a hide on that and uh, I'm going to duplicate that and set it to when I receive a start level as well uh, so when we start a level we hide the logo okay so let's go on to our game messages sprite and create a new costume for um, the press space to continue message so costumes and I can duplicate that. Let's call it press space to continue. And then go about changing the text in here. With our new message costume complete, we need to go to the code editor for the game messages sprite. And we can just duplicate one of the uh, when I receive blocks that show the other messages. So when I receive, uh, game over will do. And I'm going to change that to when I receive show space to continue message. 
And uh, we don't actually want to hide all of the game elements because that would get rid of the main logo. And we want to set the um, position where it arrives. Now, it's probably not going to be 0, 0 because that would be bang in the middle. I'm going to want it a bit lower down. So I'm going to try um, Y is uh, minus 80 and see how that looks. We're going to switch the costume to uh, press space to continue and show and sure I might as well put flash on there as well so if I click this I'll see the effect okay so that's that's worked pretty well and that placement on the screen was was pretty good if yours is too high or too low just change the Y value here and finally we just need to change the stage code so that when the green flag is pressed it actually shows our title screen rather than um, starting the level. So if I go to the stage, and here where we've got when green flag is clicked, broadcast hide game elements and wait, and broadcast start level, I'm just gonna change that to broadcast um, show title screen. So let's click on the green flag and test this out. Great. Now if I press the space key, um, nothing's actually gonna happen. And that's because we haven't written code for that yet. Um, remember, the only thing that responds to the space at the moment is our spaceship. Um, sorry, our laser. Uh, but that will only happen, that only works when a uh, start level has been broadcast. And we haven't actually broadcast that yet. So we're going to need to write some code so that um, when the space bar is pressed and the title screen is showing, it, start, it broadcasts start level. Um, but we don't want it to keep doing that every time we press space to make the laser beam appear. So we have to be careful about this because the space key is going to have sort of two functions. So to code this, we're going to need to know whether or not the game is in progress. Uh, and for that, we're going to create another game-wide variable called game in progress. So go back to your stage and variables and make a variable. And we're just going to call this, as I say, game in progress. Press OK. And when the game begins, so when we click on the green flag, um, we're going to set that to be no, because the game is not yet in progress. So let's do set, put that right at the top, set game in progress to no, no. And uh, we're going to do the same actually for game over and level complete. So change. Um, or to simplify things, we could probably do it on hide game elements because when we're hiding the game elements, but we should be careful because that might purely be a visual thing. So let's just go with a set game in progress to no here and duplicate that and stick it down there as well. So when we've got game over or level complete, um, we're going to have game in progress is no, which is going to have the effect of sort of releasing the space bar, meaning that we could use it for something else, like starting the game again or moving on to the next level. But of course, when the game is running, we want game in progress to be yes. So when I receive start level and we set the score and we set the clock interval and all of that stuff, we're going to want to set game in progress to yes. Okay, so now I've got a game-wide variable that is going to, I can use and I can test the value of that to see if a game is being played at the moment or not and determine what my spacebar should do. So let's go back to our game messages sprite and we're now going to drag in when space key is pressed and we're going to put an if block under this to say, well, if the game's not in progress and we're showing the title screen, or sorry, and we're showing the press space to continue, then start a new level. So I'm just going to go uh, if, and we're going to need an and, because I'm going to be testing for two things. So if, we'll put an and in there. And the things that we can test, we need to test the value of the variable. So we're going to have an equals in here. And we're going to say if, game in progress is equal to no, so there's no game currently in progress, and the costume uh, for this sprite, so that's under looks, and we can get um, costume, it says costume number, but from that drop down you choose costume name, 
So we're going to say, and the costume name is equal to, so I need an equals, drop it in there, and the costume name is equal to, and uh, we need to double check what it was, it was press space to continue. Uh, I'm just going to copy that and paste it so I get it exactly right. Okay, so now it's saying, right, well, when the space key's pressed, if game in progress is no, and the costume name is press space to continue, i.e. this message is showing, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to hide all the game elements, get everything out of the way, and then start the level. So let's do that with events. We can do a broadcast and wait, hide all the game elements, and then broadcast start level. So let's click on the green flag and, and just check our, our changes. So game in progress is currently no. If I press space, it starts off my game. And notice it actually started pretty much instantly with a, um, with a shot. So let me do that again. I had some shots pretty much straight away. And we haven't actually hidden the uh, press space to continue sign either. That hasn't disappeared. So we've got a little bit of uh, sorting out just to, to, to finish with. So let's have a look at what's happened here. Uh, when the space was pressed, it should have broadcast hide game elements, which should have hidden um, this flashing. Ah, okay. Uh, it does hide it, but probably it was running flash, which means it would have show it would have run a show again. So let's uh, kill all the sprites scripts, uh, see if that helps. So let's do that first. Uh, stop. Let's put it in here, stop other sprite and hide. Let's see if that fixes things to start with. Okay. Okay, so that's got rid of that. But of course, doing that will have stopped this from running. So maybe we need to change this ever so slightly. Um, and let's put, rather than having that there, Let's stick that one under here. So it's gonna hide everything, stop everything else from running, and then start the level. Let's see if that works. Okay, that's worked. But like I said, we've still got um, that instantaneous um, gunfire, which is fine, but maybe it would be nice to have just a little bit of a pause on that. So we could, there's a few ways of doing that. With the laser, when I receive start level, set ammo to 50 and get that going, we could just put a little weight in there. So I can do uh, wait for, actually I'll do it after I've set my ammo, just because I don't want people to think they've got no ammo for a short while. And we could just make that 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, let's test and see if that works better. So there's our title screen, press space, and it doesn't, doesn't do an instantaneous shoot, uh, so that's, that's better. Right, we don't need game in progress showing anymore, so let's go back to, back, uh, back to our stage, variables, and untick that so we can't see it anymore, and just test that one more time. Alien invaders, press space, continue, and there we go, that's looking great. So we've got our title screen, we've got our start message, um, we're basically done. The last thing I'm going to add to our game is uh, some music, and this will make it feel really f well uh, polished and feel like a really professional game. So the best place to add uh, music to our game is on the stage, because the stage is like the overall controller. If you put it on a sprite, then it might only run while that sprite is visible, and that gets complicated, particularly when we've got clones. So we're going to add our game music to our stage, uh, and we go to Sounds, Get rid of pop, we don't need that. And you could either um, choose some sounds or some music from the um, library of sounds that are available. And under loops, you'll find some. But you might also want to upload uh, some music from somewhere else if you can't find something suitable. The only thing you need to do is make sure that you're not using any copyright material. So a really good place to look for uh, music to use in your game is actually the YouTube audio library. If you Google YouTube audio library, then you will find that you have um, 
access to this library which has got some uh, a good selection of music and sound effects that you can use in your projects. Now you might need to give credit for some audio files um, when you use them, uh, but that's fine. It gives you all of the information you need to include in your credits and you can just stick that in your game project on the project page in Scratch. You can put that, paste that straight in. Uh, so when you found something you like in the audio library, you can just download it um, and you can then upload it into your project. Now to import your own MP3 files, just go to the Sounds tab, uh, hover over the Choose New Sound, Upload Sound, and choose the sounds from your download folder that you want to upload. So once you've got all of your sounds loaded in, you want to um, rename them to make it just a little bit more obvious to you as to which one you're going to use in each part of your game. So now you want to go back to the code for your stage and we're going to go to the sound blocks and we're going to add uh, the sound for the different elements of the game. So let's start with uh, choosing to um, play the sound for when the green flag is clicked, uh, which is going to be for like the title screen. So when the game green, green flag is clicked and we show the title screen, we're going to want to uh, play the sound or start the sound that I've named title screen. Um, for the game over, I'm going to want to do, oops, for game over, I'm going to do my game over or level complete one and the same for that. Now obviously you could have different music for game over from level complete, um, completely up to you. And when it comes to the one that's going to play uh, when we're playing the game, because this um, block finishes with this forever loop, um, I actually need to start a whole other when I receive start level because I want another forever loop that runs in parallel to this one. So I'll go to events, when I receive start level, I'm going to do a forever loop and inside that forever loop I'm going to have sound and in this time I'm going to play play sound uh, game music until done and then it will repeat and repeat and repeat so it keeps playing while my game is in progress. Uh, the other thing I might want to do is because some music might be playing from my title screen when this starts, I'm just going to do stop all sounds in there so it just kills off um, any game, any sounds, any music that's already playing before uh, my, my level music starts playing. So once again, let's uh, press the green flag and test it and see how this all works. So there we go. Congratulations, you've finished your game. Um, that's everything we're going to be doing. Now, of course, you can add more to your own games. For example, you might want to add power-ups that fall from the sky or appear um, randomly sort of near the spaceship. So it has to kind of choose, do I go for the power-up or do I shoot the alien? Um, and maybe those power-ups could do things like give the player more ammo if their ammo is running low. Or maybe it could change the laser into a different mode so that it shoots through the aliens uh, so that it, it hits more than one. Um, maybe you could do a power-up that's going to make your spaceship move more quickly by adjusting the max thrust variable value. Uh, you could, of course, add additional levels as well. And in those, you might want to change the number of rows of aliens. Um, so that's you can just do that, obviously, within your aliens. You can change this repeat to be a variable. So in level one, it repeats three times. In level two, it might repeat four times. In level four, it might repeat five times or whatever it might be. Or you could change the speed with which the aliens move around by going back to um, your stage and setting, obviously, clock interval is a variable. So you could just adjust the value of clock interval to a smaller value so that as the game progresses or you go to a harder level, um, then the aliens are going to move more quickly. Now there is one more video in this series and this is an optional video for those of you with micro bits and um, if you've got a micro bit then I really recommend this video because it's going to show you how you can adjust your game so that it uses the micro bit as a motion based controller for the spaceship.
So if you've got a micro bit, then uh, click on to the next video and see how to do that. Otherwise, I hope you've really enjoyed this series and I hope that you've, you're really pleased with the games that you've made. And I hope that along the way, you've learned some really good programming techniques that you can use in your own uh, projects. If you make um, your own games, then feel free to share them and drop the link um, as a comment on this video and uh, show off what you've done. I'm sure that other people will be impressed and give you some, some good feedback. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again for another project soon.